So in many ways you, at least for me, you de created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the, the showing the video and then commenting, it's become, it, it's everybody does it. And it's, sure. not, even the, it's not even comics. I yes. mean, that's what Tucker Carlson does when he wants to make his points. Sure. He's, he's borrowing from your yes. playbook. Yes, no, it's, it's a real delight knowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to arm the most cynical and worst people in media. But do you look at it and say now this whole thing is commoditized? You, you, or well, it was, listen, I, it was commoditized. It, you know, I wasn't doing it uh, out of gracious altruism. I mean, we were selling Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> it's always been commoditized. It was, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of talk of, so exposing absurdity or exposing hypocrisy, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that this is a relentless fight. They always talk about, you know, the, uh, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But it doesn't bend towards justice by gravity. Like, you have to bend it. And there's a bunch of people trying to bend it back. And you use every tool in your arsenal, and none of them will be, uh, you know, the one thing. There is no panacea. It takes, you know, all those different things doing in Washington over these past few years gave me a great understanding of how things actually get done incrementally and, and sometimes in one fell swoop. But our country is held together by hundreds of really talented legislative aides. Their bosses, many times, are wind-up dolls who really don't know, I mean, half of it, if you go down there, especially the Senate is like an assisted living facility. <laughs> like, the intramural sports at the Senate. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's held together by these legislative aides that are relentlessly trying uh, uh, to do the right thing and by the thousands of grassroots activists that are trying to get access. And they're blocked by a moat of lobbyists and moneyed interests that prevent the people in that building from doing the work that best benefits all the people outside of that building. And, and, and that's the process. So but you have you, to use every tool you have to permeate that force field. But presumably the people there who are Republicans, who are conservative Republicans, mm -hmm. those aides think they're doing the right thing and they're trying to get across their Sure, right, but they're doing vision. it, they're honest. Look, if you can find honest brokers down there, you can work with them. What I'm saying is that force field around it is made up of not honest brokers. It's moneyed interests, it's lobbyists, it's people who are weaponizing misinformation and disinformation. And all of those form this, it's the most cloistered so you universe. So you found you could deal with very conservative Republicans? Of course. Because there was some way to find common ground. People of good faith. Now, there were huge disagreements about certain things, but when you found someone of good faith, you could always get something done. 